Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Locked on Bulls. In today's episode, we'll talk about two players that the Bulls are linked to in this upcoming free agency. We'll also be doing a draft profile on Musa Diabate. I just love saying his name that way, by the way. <laughs> we'll also finish off the episode talking about the NBA and the WNBA looking to expand in the next few years. We'll do all that and more in today's Locked on Bulls. That's a hell of an album, brother. Oh, yeah. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. Locked On Bulls, a member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. That's Pat the Designer, host and creator of the Windy City Breeze. My name's Hayes, and I'm host and creator of Chicago Bulls Central. Um, and today, we're jumping right into the topics. Pat, the Bulls have been linked to Kyrie Irving and Bojan Bodmanovic. I don't believe none of this. Like, l- listen, the off-season content for these <laughs> these sites, man, it's it's ridiculous. And I don't know if you've traced it. And I know, like, and I feel sorry because oh, yeah. some Bulls fans they'll take this stuff and they'll they'll and think run that with this it. actually news when it's not. Did you did you trace the boat the the Bodon rumor and where it started from? I didn't see where the Bojan started from. I was following the Kyrie trail, and the Kyrie trail is basically just odds. The Bulls are the odds on. Yeah. I believe fifth favorite, which isn't bad. Yeah, you know, I mean, thirty-two teams in the league, he could go, or thirty teams in the league can go to. The fifth favorite ain't bad, but I didn't trace the Bojan. Where's that start from? So the Bojan thing, listen, I had to pull out because I'm petty. You already know, y'all know I'm petty. Um, <laughs> so I, I, and this is why you guys have to, and I don't expect everybody to have time to trace this stuff back. I, and you know, and it sucks because there's so much misleading stuff out there with the way that the media does things. But so this started by an article written by Eric Walden of the Salt Lake Tri- Tribune, who is clearly looking for off-season content. And in his article, he completely wrote it as speculative, uh, just yeah. a deal that 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 the that the Jazz could do to move Bojan. Yeah. And so he presented that deal there and just writing it up, hey, this could work. Um, <laughs> and so literally people have picked that up, other other outlets that have picked have picked it up looking for some type of content and they they completely cut that part out that it was speculative and now you just hear the things of oh the bulls are linked to bojan no that's not how this happened <laughs> come on man hey as somebody that does a daily show every day speculative is content my boy <laughs> <laughs> you gotta try and make it up as you go but but no i i, I agree with you at the bojan to me makes it makes some sense i guess right because like in theory, at a minimum, he's a shooter. Yes, he's older. Contract's not crazy. You tuck him away. You hope that he comes in there and knocks some shots down for you. Savvy vet, right? Savvy vet kind of player. I'm not sa- – I'll send you TBJ. <laughs> we can't yeah, even do that. He's a restricted free agent. So, you, like, you want to sign and trade for him? Well, uh, with- uh, yes. <laughs> Cause I can sign him to two men. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 one of those. Um, I can see why the content came up. I don't see them doing it. Um, the Kyrie one I think is a little bit more interesting though, because listen, we can we can say all we want about speculation and all that stuff. Uh, Vegas odds are real, and and Vegas odds are very interesting. And and you saw the the list of teams that were on there. You had the Clippers, had the Lakers, I believe, were in the top four. Bulls were in the top five. Um, to me, all of those teams honestly make sense for a Kyrie Irving to go to if Brooklyn's really done with him. Right? This is also all based on if he's leaving Brooklyn. If Brooklyn's really done with him, I could see Kyrie. As a Clipper, I could see Kyrie reunited with LeBron, right? Like, hey, listen, at this point, I've played second fiddle everywhere I've gone since leaving you. I might as well play second fiddle to the dude that I won a championship with. Um, and and I don't – I wouldn't like what you would have to offer to get Kyrie, but if Kyrie Irving says, hey, I want to play for the Chicago Bulls, you dang right I want him on my team. Like I, I off season stuff aside, just basketball. Kyrie Irving's one of the best players that has ever touch a basketball. I want Kyrie talent. Irving is going to move to a desert and become Obi Wan Kenobi. I, I'm good on that. 
I'm good on that. <laughs> I'm good on that. Like, no, and this is all jokes. But yes, the basketball sense, just, you know, being honest, just the just the on the court basketball. Yeah. It absolutely makes sense. And considering his deal is $36.9 million, and I forgot what Lonzo's getting paid exactly, we could make technically, theoretically, make a deal work without giving up a whole lot. But yeah. that would have to mean that the Nets would want Lonzo Ball as part. Because keep in mind, KD has already said that if Kyrie's gone, he's up out of there too. Did we get confirmation on that? I, I thought that that well, was it's the, more offseason content. I so. thought that that was the if KD, if Kyrie, if Kyrie doesn't stay, KD will want to leave because they haven't been able to put a team around him, which the whole caveat to all of this is wait out the Kyrie situation and, and deal with what you got to deal with for another year. Cause if KD wants to leave, please be in that situation. I'll pay KD till he's 40. <laughs> <laughs> I got no Man. problems with it. I just don't see it happening. I don't see it realistically happening. Also just the amount of the deal. Um, I just, I don't think that it's realistic. Like, like I, I understand what you're saying with the basketball sense, but I just, I don't see it happening, bro. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do a deal with Kyrie. Anything outside of a one and one deal. I would give Kyrie a blank check for the first year, with a game stipulation. You have to be in at a minimum sixty games, for us to give you this level of money. But you better have a team option on the other side of that thing. There's no player option. There's no LeBron James in this where you're getting a one and one at, with like you did with LeBron, and then he's like, oh, well, I'll opt in or I'll opt out. Uh-uh. We decide whether you come back or not because at this point, you've shown us that even outside of just like up and not being there, you're not healthy enough to play a full season. The only reason we saw you healthy in the playoffs this year is because you missed the entire beginning of the season. So... I don't know. Is there, let me ask you this. Is there a speculation deal that you've heard, right? Some off season content that you've heard that you were like, Oh, I'd mess with that. No, I'd do that. I'd there's been it. seriously not for, for the bulls. Yeah. Right. And there's been some stuff for not for the bulls that I've seen that I've been like, Oh, that may work But for the bulls. No. And that's because most of it is built around it. Most of it is Zach Levine speculation. Like, and most of that's not happening, but no, there's not been, at least not to my recollection that I can at least recall right now, a deal for the Chicago Bulls that have been favorable or even even an even deal, even a deal that's sensible for the Chicago Bulls that I've seen that makes any bit of sense Yeah. at this point in the offseason. I think as we get closer to the end of June, beginning of July, that's when the sensible deals will start coming out. Right now, <laughs> it's just people fishing, bro. It's literally just people fishing. Nah, man, you telling me you missed that article on uh, TBJ and Kobe for uh, 89 MJ, Brian, KD, <laughs> AD. Uh, we get back James Harden to come off the bench, and uh, Embiid's going to play water boy. <laughs> That's how these deals come out in the offseason. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, I did hear that we can get AD for Chance the Rapper, though. <laughs> I did hear that. I'm not going to lie to you. I might make the trade because I don't really know if Chance Allegiance is live, bro. Chance was swinging that, swinging that towel a little hard for the, uh, for, the, for the Milwaukee Bucks when they championship came around, bro. I don't know if Chance Allegiance is live. But then again, we're getting back a Packers fan in that situation. So it's tough. It's tough. I don't know, man. Um, Offseason, the one – that brought us there was a deal that we were going to make that we were supposed to make with to send Zach Levine to the Spurs that got you back their pick Jakob Podol and Devin Vassell that one seemed like a more sensible pick it seemed like okay we're not overvaluing who anybody is mm -hmm. and you're getting a young piece you're getting a draft pick and you're getting a solid veteran mm -hmm. that's probably the only one that I've seen this offseason that I was like I wouldn't like it, but I could deal with it because there's pieces in place and because the deal actually makes sense that, that could, you could move forward with. That's probably the only one I've seen. Other than that, it's like trade Zach Levine for AD. <laughs> the one that gives me is people who literally be like, well, trade him for Russell Rushbrook, and the Bulls would take that because they're missing, they're lo losing Zach Levine, so it makes sense that they get. To no, nobody is taking Russell Rushbrook's contract right now. Bro, Listen. bro. The if, Lakers aren't trading this, Russell Westbrook. This is the thing. Like, if you're under the sound of my voice, 
And you think that it's sensible for the Bulls to get Russell Westbrook back in any type of Zach Levine trade? Cut the podcast off. Just go ahead. Don't even worry about it. Just cut the podcast off. Don't cut. Stop the video. Stop all. I need you to go to your closest, whatever religion that you practice. I need you to go. And I need you to dip yourself in holy water. Because if that's the case, you are too far gone for anything that we can give you here on Chicago. I mean, uh, Locked on Bulls. We can't give you nothing. We can't. We got nothing for you. The funny thing is, <laughs> the Lakers are just like, no, LeBron, you made this bed, <laughs> lie in it. This is yours. Hey, but you know what's funny? I give that's you exactly rest. that's exactly what Doctor Bus would do, right? It's weird to see that yeah. this this Lakers front office do that, but Doctor Bus he would absolutely be like, hey, I gave you I gave you the reins. This is this is the this is what you decided to make. Hey. Hey. Dr. Bus would have never gave him the reins. Let's be That's real. That's true. That's Dr. absolutely Dr. Bus would have been like, go That's down absolutely. there and play ball like you're <laughs> supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> and then threw some vicinities in there after he walked out. Yeah, it would have been time. It was a different time. It was a different time. Leave that alone. <laughs> but next up, we're going to talk. get back into our draft player profiles, which we did not do yesterday. We're going to be talking about Musa Diabante. And that's somebody who I think that Stacey King would have a great time coming up with a nickname for that young fella. But first, I got to talk to you guys about Bill Barr. Now, first of all, Bill Barr has had you guys covered on everything from the puffs to the regular bars. Now they got granola bars. And guess what? The granola bars is just as good and just packed, just as packed with the healthy protein of everything else that the Built Bar does not miss. Now, you may ask, Built, Built Granola Bars, what are they? What are Built Granola Bars? Well, first up, they come in three delicious flavors, in peanut, uh, chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. They're covered in 100% real chocolate as everything Built Bar does. Look, I mean, Built Bar just has 100% real chocolate in tubs, <laughs> just liquid 100% chocolate, just ready to go at all times. <laughs> They're 150, 150 calories, 15 grams of protein, only 4 grams of sugar, and will change your world. Bill Bar has cracked the code for better granola. And so we know you've been waiting on a delicious, uh, a healthy, delicious granola bar to help the market. This is your time. Head to Built.com right now to get the granola bars in three delicious flavors that I already mentioned. Go to Built.com to get your granola bars now. But when you go there, use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. At built.com. All right. Got 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 that craziness of off-season content washed up off us. Um, <laughs> you feel better? I, I, I do. I feel I feel much better. I'm glad that that was the first topic of the day and not the last topic of the day. That's almost as bad as Nagyitis, and I'm glad that we got all that washed up off us, man. Um <laughs> next up, we're gonna be talking about a draft prospect, Musa. Diabate, and this is coming, he's coming out of Michigan. Uh, he is a uh, 6'10", 215-pound power forward with a 7'1 wingspan. And he didn't do a lot in his freshman year. He did play 24 minutes per game, played 32 games, averaged only 19 points per game. But that is not going to tell you the full story of Musa Diabate. He is a, he's, he's versatile defensively. Um, he's going to be able to make his mark defensively now. There, there are some issues with him on the perimeter, but considering he's going to be a big man, especially if he balks up, he shouldn't be on the perimeter too much. He has great coordination. He's mobile. Great passing as well. Not the best three-point shooter, but he does have a three-point shot that you can possibly see developing to him to be part of his arsenal. Not necessarily be a, a volume three-point shooter, but he's going to be able to probably hit a three-pointer over the course of his NBA career. But the things that make Musa Diabante such a great prospect, in my opinion, Pat, is his ability to run up and down the floor, not only as the trailer to get alley-oops, which would be huge with Lonzo or Ayo Desumu, but his ability to be the passer and also do some playmaking on those fast breaks in the half court, um, as well as in the high post. He is a player that scores very well. He's going to get you second chance points. He's going to rebound well for you. He's not the best blocker right now. He doesn't show the coordination to be a blocker as of yet. But considering his length, that may be something that comes to him in the NBA game as the game slows down to him. Pat, what do you think about Musa Diabate? Um, I, it, it's It's tough, right, because you're trying to base it for what the team needs now. Now, he did have a huge game at Michigan. I believe his career high was 28. He had a couple of really nice games at Michigan, but it's all at the bucket. A mm -hmm. um, little bit of a jumper, not much. The three-point shot, like you said, wasn't really something to be sold on. He only shot it at about 21%. Um, 
<clears throat> average less than a block a game. The, the, the part that you feel good about, right, is that he had uh, Jawan Howard coaching him. <laughs> so you're like, he's got to have some kind of nasty yeah. in him, right? He's got to have a little bit of something. Was he in or did, did he throw a punch? On the uh, on the coach's <laughs> fight, was he in on that? That's my question first and foremost. But when when I look at his game, one, he was a very up and down guy in the rotation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see him as a pick that the Bulls could make and feel like he's going to turn into something that can contribute this year. Oh, and yeah, we've no, said this many a- times. Yeah, this is not a this year pick. No, he he, he said <laughs> we've said this many a times on the podcast. You need something this year. He's a nice player, right? But 6'11, 210 pounds. Um, uh, right now, very, very or 6'11, 215. I'm sorry, very slight. Um, to have the wingspan that he does and not be a real shot blocker, um, really didn't show much of a shot blocking prowess at all. Uh in college, less than a block a game. Um I wouldn't go here at 18 in the slightest. I feel like he might even be there a little bit later if the Bulls wanted to do a trade back scenario. I just don't see him working out in Chicago in, in any sense, right? Like I almost, I don't, I don't want to put, I don't want to put a bad stigma on him. Cause right. Like you put a bad stigma on a dude and then it's like, Oh, he's terrible. He turned out to be one of the best players of all time. And you're an idiot. It's like, yeah, I hold that one. But like, I, Am I the only one that gets kind of like Tyrus Thomas vibes? Uh, no, only because he is a way more competent and higher basketball IQ. Because he's not Tyrus Thomas never could pass the ball like Moose. This is true, like, yeah. but I mean, even with that, right? Like he he's he's good for like the hockey assists. When I watched his oh, game, oh he, no, he's he was, he's he's good for more than that, brother. Uh... He's good for more than that. And keep in mind, even in his up and down. Uh, plays. Uh, I mean, well, minutes this season, he was the fourth best in the in the NCAA at offensive rebound. That I'll give you. That I'll give you. He definitely can come in, but can he come in and be a rebounder the same way at two hundred fifteen pounds right now? Well, that's the thing. I, I agree with you that he's not a and and I guess me and you both also disagree with the fact that I don't necessarily think the Bulls have to go now they can and that's what i want them to do i don't think they have to go somebody who can contribute right now because they still have veterans to bring on this team they could go long-term potential and i don't think ak if he if he sees musa diabate being their their future starter center or whatever he's going to draft him regardless if he's able to contribute right away right now or not but again yeah. one of the thing, other things that we talked about when you still don't know what's going on with marco simonovich do you invest in another project as a big man so Right. And and maybe listen, maybe you're you're hoping for a couple of projects to all hit at once, but okay. I don't know. I, I just don't see him as a as a viable option for the Bulls. Um, never was more than really like I said, he had the one game that popped, never was more than really a 14 point a game guy. Um, and and that was kind of his high for most of the games that he got tick in. And he just I don't know. I, I don't see him working out right away. Um, the one time, and I'm not, I'm not going to act like I'm a huge college guy. I go back and watch the tape after. Um, mm-hmm. but the one game that I definitely watched of him was, uh, against, uh, Illinois and the guy that you love to hate on made him look real bad. Well, he should <laughs> at being seven, one and 300 pounds, somebody who's six ten, linky and 215 pounds, you better body him up. I'm, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like Kofi's I, still I, not an NBA player. I, I, I don't, I don't, Kofi I don't see him. We're going to have to hash that out one day. Dog. Hey, that's, <laughs> I don't think, know, listen, you know I don't think, is? I don't think Kofi have not had a good debate on here yet. Nah, that's not something, really. especially in the middle of, of, of off season, off season content. Maybe we need to do a Pat versus Hayes series just a whole week. A just whole week, topic. just us debating. Just, just us gotta, debating. Hey, the problem is we both pretty logical, so we got to find topics this we true, actually true. disagree this on. This is true. Um, this is true. But no, the, the the only problem I got with it is you don't even think Kobe's an NBA player. It's like, it's like, dang, dog. Like, I mean, seven <laughs> foot 285, like, what else he going to do? Go flip burgers? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, nah, I, I don't see Diabate being a viable option for the Bulls. I don't even know if I see him being a, a good option long term in the NBA. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like point mm. nine assists per game, point nine blocks. Like the I, now listen, college stats honestly mean nothing, right? Because Zach Levine averages 27 points a game. Yeah. And in college, he was off the bench as 
the the seventh guy. But personally, I mean, I think he would have to bulk up a lot. I think he would have to improve on his three-point shot quite a bit. You're not going to be able to be the rim runner around the rim. Like, even you think about Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert is not light. Like, if he was going to be that kind of player, he's not light. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I I don't know what his skill set is that's going to translate to the NBA consistently. He's not even a guy that in most games took a three-point shot. Yeah, he only took he only averaged 0.4 three point shots per game. So yeah, there you go so, with that one. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't see it. Um, uh, but maybe listen, he's he's a freshman. He's coming in, he'll be what now, 20, now you know you know 21? three years from now, if he's in the NBA averaging 12 and, balling, and 10, everybody's gonna kill me. Huh? They're gonna come in the comments like, Hey Pat, you remember that time you said you didn't see it from Moose Deal? All right, that's okay because by the time uh by that time Kofi will be in the NBA averaging uh 10 and 10 and, and they'll be like happen, hey hey it's remember that eight it's not remember gonna happen eight? it's not i'm telling you it's not gonna happen we can, you know what let's do it for real. this is long-term bet let's bet 50 dollars right now that in three years from now kofi coburn is not even if he is in the nba he's not getting more than nine minutes per game money don't do it for me money don't do it for me we, what you want to do we'll put, we'll put some we'll put some alcohol on it we'll put a bottle okay. of something on it bottle okay. of something. we'll set the limit at 50 dollars because okay. I ain't going to break you. I, I got expensive taste. Oh, but, I do too, especially with my bourbon. So I, That's I exactly why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, put, we'll put a bottle of, of whatever anybody wants. If What we say, three years time, four years three, time? Three years. Three, three years. years time. Three. <laughs> we got to somebody archive this for us. I'm going to put it in the Google calendar. It's going to pop back up. <laughs> like, oh, we got the You're going to set a date. <laughs> <laughs> going to pop up randomly. Watch they both be out of the NBA. <laughs> like, who wins? Who wins it? Oh, uh, so what 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 do we call what are we saying is viable then? We saying ten and ten for 10 either and one? 10? You think he can average ten and ten in the NBA? Oh no, I'm not willing to say that. Oh my uh, god! <laughs> you know what? Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, He's if that's what you, that, he can't that, average 10 that's, more? that's what you're that's what you're waiting because he may not be a starter, but. He may be a hell of a bench player because of his energy, and he may be a hell of a bench player. If he's a bench player, I don't. I'm not going to. Okay, pick okay. 10 let's 10 let's say let's say ten and six. All right, like 10 and 6. 10 and 6. This is, by the way, these are horrible. We're talking about Bulls possibly drafting this dude. If he's 10 <laughs> and 6 in four years, we all in trouble. Uh, or yeah, do you want to go over or under actual NBA games played? Nah, because I think they'll, both, like, they keep people around in the league now. But that's, but pl- actual playing in games, though? I mean, shoot, you get in in garbage time, you play. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. 10 and 6 for, for Kofi or, or Diabate. You, you don't seem too confident time. in Diabate game, man. Oh, I, I, feel, I feel confident that he's going to be a better player than Kofi Coburn. That's, That's for sure. All this is. Hey, really, <laughs> let's, let's set it at that. Let's set it at that. In three years' time, whichever one is the better player. And that's fair because we're that's both fair. logical. So even if yeah. I'm wrong, I'll have no problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I, feel, I feel like we both were like, all right, let's set it at 10 and 10. Yeah, let's roll that back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Three years. We'll see who's the better player. That's so crazy. 2025. <laughs> y'all be tuned, y'all be tuned in. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna set it for right now. June 2nd, 2025. We'll see who's the better player. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> he's putting All it in the calendar right I'm putting now. Putting it in the calendar. Hey, while he's putting that in the calendar, man, we got to tell you, we got to ask you guys if you could do us a favor. Uh, we put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners. We love you guys here in Chicago, and we really want to make this the best podcast for you, and we want to make this podcast even better. And this is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about the podcast. Remember, keep it respectful because we do roast. Uh, go to the, go to, we got to be the only podcast. In all of Locked On, that will roast people. Oh, we gotta sure. be. For we sure. gotta be. Uh, go to lockedonpodcast.com forward slash survey right now to get your uh, to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes the survey can qualify for a chance to win one of uh, what is that? One of ten one hundred dollar. I keep wanting to say one ten thousand dollars ten hundred dollar gift card. Don't worry about it. One of ten one hundred dollar gift cards to Ticketmaster. To to take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com forward slash survey. Thank you for your help. We appreciate y'all for rocking with the show. Let's get into this final segment, my boy. And I just got it. It's all saved in there. Uh, Petty is back. Um, (laughs) So lastly, we're going to talk about the WNBA and the NBA. Apparently, are both planning to expand with two new teams here in the next few years. We're going to be talking about and breaking that down. So, Pat, uh, this all comes about because 
the Portland Trailblazers are being are about to be sold. Actually, the former owner of Nike just put in a over two billion dollar offer for the Portland Trailblazers. But part of the thing that came out during that conversation is where that the Portland Trailblazers then could not go on to move to Seattle because there's a planned expansion by the NBA to move into Seattle and Vegas, which is where two West Coast teams, one of them are having to go to the East. Who's going to be yeah. on the East uh, in, in the Eastern Conference? But then also the Atlanta. WNBA is looking to expand with two different teams that are actually posted today on what cities you would like to see the WNBA expand into. I have some issues with the WNBA part of this. We already can't support – the WNBA does not support their players is the best. We just had the Chicago Sky stuck trying to get on a, a normal flight, and y'all trying to expand more teams? That I have an issue with, brother. On the podcast side, y'all can't see me. I'm just sitting here letting him preach right now because, my God, bro. Like, like seriously. Like, it's disrespectful. It's, it's really disrespectful that you are not supporting the like these athletes that put their heart and soul on there. If you guys have not watched the WNBA game, I know some people just hate on it. It's some of the most purest basketball you will watch. They put their heart and souls into this. And to be stranded. They were literally stranded in an airport for 12 hours. But you want to expand and spend money on new stadiums, new arenas, new merch, all this, that's a bit of a problem for me, brother. I agree uh, from the WNBA side because, like you said, uh, they don't support their players. And I'm not asking – listen, I'm I'm real about the WNBA situation. I love the WNBA. Enjoy the WNBA. People don't watch the WNBA as much as they watch the NBA. The revenue will not be the same. No, no matter what, right? Like, so they're not going to get paid anywhere near what the players are getting in the NBA are getting paid. The problem that I that I also have is that one of their coaches can come in and make more than a team's payroll. That's a whole different mm. situation in itself. But as far as expanding teams from the WNBA side, it makes no sense to me. Because you have to grow your brand where your brand already is. I don't think that the WNBA brand has grown enough. I don't think it's promoted enough. Heck, we had games on. What were the, there were finals games on at like? What was, it was like, like one p.m. Bro, it was like one p.m. on a on a Thursday. Yeah, I was live calling it. There's not you. The WNBA first and foremost probably needs <clears throat> to have its finals where nothing else is going on. They need to figure that out first, but that's a whole different situation. Don't, the WNBA, don't get me started on that. But as far as the NBA expansion, um, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Long overdue. Long overdue. I don't know. Here's, here's my question, right? How much expansion is too much expansion? I would say the NBA never needs to be over. I would say at the most, we're 30 teams right now, 34 teams. Anything over that is probably pushing it. You don't want to get close to 40 teams. That's way too much. I'm just thinking about scheduling, right? Because you play everybody twice right now. Yes, every, at least. So in, in division, you play them four times. Four times. In conference, you play them three times. And then out of conference, you play them twice. Right. Yeah. And and first off, let's get rid of divisions. That's a whole different thing. Uh, I heard uh, you <laughs> talked about that on the breeze the other day. And bro, I was like, you know what? That, that yeah, that looks. Bro, nice. right now, hey, listen. On the breeze, I said what the divisions are. What are the divisions? Do you know? Yeah, Atlantic, Southeast, Central, uh, Pacific, and yeah, that's it, right? No, oh, I'm missing two. I'm missing yeah, two yeah. more divisions. I named four. <laughs> Atlantic, Central, Southeast, Southwest. And Northwest. That's the yeah. two I was missing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> hey, listen. Just get rid of them. If you got to <laughs> think about it that hard, just get rid of them. If we got to Google it. Uh, but no, I, I, I feel like that would be my only question mark. How's travel going to work? How's com How is, is there going to be a competitive advantage? Is there going to be, you know what I'm saying? Because like, hey, I played you twice, but I played you once. I have no idea, right? Like, and so we get into game one of the playoffs and I got to play you and I, I've seen you one time. We'll have to go up in games too. We're looking at that at that point moving up to 84 games a season. Oh, it'd be 86 games a season. Is that really? Would you you would have to increase the schedule? I, I just assumed you wouldn't play somebody. No, they're they're still gonna keep that. Because like in the NFL, you don't play everybody. True, but that that's not gonna be the NBA. The NBA is literally gonna keep that. This like that's literally been the same the whole time. You play everybody at least twice. I don't see them changing that just because they added two teams. So that's gonna add four more games to the schedule. It's gonna make it an eighty-six oh. game season. 
Oh God. Listen, I love the NBA. Regular season's too long. Uh, <laughs> that's a whole different debate. Uh, by the way, on the WNBA side, charter them a flight. It's twelve hundred to ten thousand dollars a flight. Please. And charter as them. of right now, bro, get this, get this. Today, the uh, Connecticut and Las Vegas play each other. Guess where it's aired at? Where? Facebook. Yeah, they get they they got a. That's, that's not you're not getting revenue off that. Yeah. I mean, you're probably getting a little bit. Don't get me wrong. Facebook is throwing them something. But come on, man. Come on. I'm sorry. I know I got it's, sidetracked. As it's, far also, as it, it's also about what you can... You, you got to be able to sell it, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe that's where they could sell it. The Aces are the best team in, in the WNBA do, right now. Do, do you know Do you know where... Exactly. They're 9-1. And, and, and yeah. the fucking Connecticut Sun are 6-3. and three. Yeah. But if the WNBA truly wanted to make money, they have to expand overseas. They have to do, either do something to where they ha hold a tournament overseas where three, well, every, uh, uh, maybe you do three because it's 12 teams in the WNBA right now, right? We're at 12? Yeah. So if it's 12 teams, you send six teams over there, have a tournament where each one plays the other team two times. You send the other six teams over there a month later because guess what? That revenue, I lived in Italy. Women's basketball in Italy is, is supported. I guarantee you if the WNBA did a tournament over in Italy like that, they'd make more money probably than what they make stateside. Hmm. And it, I mean, it makes more sense because they're already over. The, they they got to find a different expansion ain't the answer for them. No, for the not. NBA, it's fine, right? The NBA is not going anywhere. I, I would have some, I guess I'd have some issues with scheduling and stuff like that. But like, mm -hmm. that's little bitty stuff. Hey, guess what? By the time we get to game 86, I'll still be calling game 86. Yeah. But uh, I, I have an issue with trying to do too much all at once because you see somebody else that's able to do it. There's no reason to expand more teams. Make the teams that you have household names. Make the teams that you have. Like, <clears throat> I'm not naive to the fact, excuse me, that the Chicago Sky are now a household name because they won a championship. Yeah. People weren't tuning in for Chicago Sky games at the rate that they are this season, like they were net last season. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I I, I think that <clears throat> there's there's a, a twofold sword on the WNBA side where yeah, expansion means more money in your pocket right now, but not if people aren't watching. That's true. And I mean, the one thing that expansion does, we've been very negative, but I do want to say there's so many WNBA players, even in the first round that are drafted, that end up not making teams. Two more teams will help that a lot. I mean, that's the breaks, though. There's, there's I mean, a, true. There's a million players that want to people that want to be NBA players every year. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a million people that are not an actual million, but there's, there's thousands of people that, that literally go to tryouts every year, Tr go try out for G league teams, go try out for just, just to have a chance to, to get an opportunity to play. Unfortunately, sports is if you're good enough, you play. If you're not, you don't. I know we want to make it the include everybody and everybody's going to get a chance to play, but that's how Cristiano Felicio gets $34 million. This we don't want that in the fast. WNBA. Yep, Cristiano Felicio fast. might get cooked in the WNBA. Oh, for sure. <laughs> this campers will give Felicio the business. Bro. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's my thought. NBA, like, it makes sense. NBA is making the most money that they have. They what talk, are the cities they talk? Uh, Seattle and Vegas? Seattle and Vegas. Um, I like that. They also are making the most. They're up for another CBA at the end of 2014, so that's theoretically when they would build in the expansion into the next CBA. It all makes sense for the NBA. They're making the most money ever. It makes sense. For the WNBA, though, it just it raises so many questions, man. So yeah. many questions. But and here's here's my question. If you, if you're a Seattle fan, where do you root? Do you go back like you were a SuperSonics fan and then you became a Thunder fan? Do you just root for the Sonics again? It might be easier now actually cuz the Thunder suck. But do you root for the Sonics again or do you oh, stick yeah. with the Bro, Thunder? If they announce a new Sonics team and they name it this see, anyway Seattle's going to support basketball now that they missed out on it they're yeah. going to be hungry for it they're they're switching whether they moved to Portland to be Portland fans whether they stayed OKC fans the yeah. moment that a team breaks ground in Seattle they're going to that team there's no question about it I would agree with that that's true yeah. that's true they're, they're going to be I would not be, be surprised depending on the the size of the arena that they build 
if as, as far as percentage of seats sold, if the first two years Seattle's back in it, basketball's back in Seattle, they lead the, they lead the league in attendance. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Who's who's going in the expansion draft? Though? That's the question. Yeah, that's that's see, we got to ask the question. Listen, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean by then he'll probably be out of the league. But like, uh if, if they did the expansion draft today, you know they're making him available. It literally would be like, please, please take him. <laughs> well, it, it would be different because you don't need as big of a roster, right? Like when we've seen it in the NHL, it's a bigger roster. In the NFL or in the NBA, you only need 15. Yeah. So I can pick and choose who I want. Now, granted, though, was Rush drafted by Seattle? No, I, they were already in OKC by then. They were already in OKC. The last, the say. last draft picks by Seattle were KD, uh, KD and Jeff Green because they were drafted yeah. in the same draft. Those last, yeah, two. yeah. That that would be that would be the way you know you bring them home and be like, hey, this is where you were meant to play. <laughs> Should have been here. <laughs> that is hilarious. But uh, hey, that's it, man. Unless you got anything else. Nah, man, that's it for me. All right, uh, follow us on everything at Locked On Bulls. Uh, make sure to follow me at Path of Designers at P A T T H E D E S I G N E R. You can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I Z E. I don't know if you're finna do your whole spill, but I just cut you off. So there you go. Oh, you weren't gonna do it anyway. All right. Uh, you <laughs> thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, go and check on Locked On NBA, where you can catch our very own Pat, the designer, over there once a week. But that is where the Locked On experts break down everything from the playoffs to anything else to do with the NBA. Um, but that is it for us for today. That's it for us for this week. We will see you, lovely and beautiful people, next week. Peace, y'all. Peace.